just would like to uh, show with you some of my background and why, why I'm now working with stem cells. It was basically because of the kind of work that I was doing uh, when I started uh, doing my, my PhD. And, uh, so I started with uh, this guy, Rafael Linden, worked with cell death. And it's an interesting thing because cell death, uh, when you think about cell death, you think that something wrong happens. But like, if you get your brain, almost 50% of your brain dies naturally in the first before actually before you were born it's a way to shape the brain so like it's important for to, to understand the cell death that is behind the formation of the brain so I was interested in this thing before then I went I went to US spent uh, six uh, years working in California with this guy Jared Chan try to understand a little bit more about these mechanisms of uh, that's behind the uh, cell death in the brain and then during that period, uh, we came with this uh, new proposal about how the brain is organized and how cells of the brain, they, uh, they are different when you talk about the DNA. So uh, we published a few papers showing that like, if you get, all of us, we learned that we have 46 chromosomes in, it, in all of our cells, right? And we, we basically, we showed first in uh, mice and then in humans that that's not the case for the brain. We have cells with 44, 45, 47 chromosomes. And it maybe could explain some of the uh, difference in the uh, behavior, or even with, when you get siblings, when you get twins, maybe there's some difference in these twins based on this. We ought to call it as it's like a, a finger, fingerprint, but it, that's in the brain. One funny, funny story that I just remember here. Uh, I was working this thing very hard, and then once I, I went uh, home, and uh, it was very late, maybe like a Midnight, just arrived from the university, put a, get a pizza in the microwave, and then turn on the TV, and I watched the, that uh, X Files. That X Files thing. And then, I, I, I'm not lying, it was really amazing. I was uh, watching that, and the, in that episode, that was two twins. One was very bad, the other one was a very nice person. One was killing everybody, and the other not. And then that, the Scully and the other guy that I forgot his, his name, Mulder and the Scully, they were trying to understand what was going on behind that different in behavior. And honestly, this is, it's called Eve, the, the name of the episode. And the answer for that is that they have different, the answer in the movie was that they have different levels of unemployed in their brains. And that was like, come on. That's, and that was like, basically, that guy, Chris Carter, he has so very cool ideas. And that, that idea was there even before we published our first paper. So it was, I was very amazed about the, that thing. And then I went to the lab last day. Look, maybe this, is, this, can, this can explain several things. And then we start to do this kind of thing. So let's, think, let's talk a little bit about, more about the challenges. So it was like uh, 2005. I decided that I'd like to come back to Brazil. I, it was like something that I always, I was always, always in my mind. I was, of course, when I, you were in the US for a long time, you start to be uh, used, accustomed with the uh, facilities or the easy way of especially to do science there. But I thought it was important to, to come back. And I'm very happy to, to, to come back. But basically, I, I came with a tank like this, of course, with all of my personal stuff, but with this tank with uh, 100 vials of stem cells. And that was basically how I started the lab. Uh, I used to work in this uh, place here that is called the Scripps Research Institute. And it was, of course, after September 11, 2001. 2000, yeah, 2001. So it was very tough to come with this kind of thing that looks like a bomb in the, in the plane. But fortunately, everything was, went fine, and then I, I came to Brazil. And the first thing that I, 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 I think that was important is that let's, in that, that, on that moment, that, that there were not so many people working with uh, embryonic stem cells in the country. And I said, let's organize, let's do a meeting, and let's see how's the scenario of the stem cell in, in the country. So we did it in uh, 2005, and it was very good. It was crowded, almost 500 people attended to this meeting. And what we realized that first, of course, not so many people work in the field. The high cost to do that kind of science here, and the, the difficult to import reagents. And then we, we decided let's try to uh, work uh, with, like, of course, uh, several uh, people with, like, the societies and everything. Try to uh, improve or try to reduce some of these things. So I'm going to show to you some of the things that we we work at to try to uh, have a better environment to work with stem cells here in the country. So uh, one thing that we decided to do, we decided to do several training courses 
in the country. So nowadays we have uh, at least uh, 22 labs in the country that where people went to our lab to be trained, and then they are now working in different places in Brazil. And it was uh, important for to increase the, the field. At least I'm talking about embryonic stem cells, right? In the adult stem cells, there are several people doing a lot of very good stuff here. But in terms of the embryonic stem cells, not so many people. And then the other thing that the, we thought that was interesting, we have to try to create our own reagents, not only because it's going to be cheaper, and because we need to maybe make some profit based on the uh, reagents that uh, usually we buy from outside, from, from abroad. And the other thing that we did is that this is the, the amount of plates. This is like plastic plates where you put cells inside, and then you need, we need to culture the cells. It takes a while. This is like basically the amount of plate that would be necessary, for example, to plan a clinical test using a uh, clinical trial using embryonic stem cells. So it's going to be crazy, or in Brazil, or everywhere. So it's going to be crazy to try to culture so many plates at the same time, or like it's going to increase the heterogeneity of the, your cultures before you even start to do the trial. So we, uh, in, co combination with, we in collaboration with uh, the engineers from our university, we created this system where we basically, everything that, all of the cells that we are putting, that all of that, uh, plates we can put into one of these flasks here and then we we basically we put uh, and it got a prize from the health public system in Brazil in 2009 that's basically a way to culture the cells it's very simple we can get much more cells in this way and uh, when we are ready to do the clinical trials with embryonic stem cells we will have a, a very uh, closed system and very safe in terms of like avoiding contamination and everything so it was important to try to invest in process instead of just doing like publishing papers on that on that period. One other thing that we did is try to develop a new uh, culture medium. The price of the culture medium to work with these cells in, in Brazil it's around uh, it's three thousand uh, reais per liter of the meter of the of the medium, and uh, basically we spend three thirty liters per uh, month, sometimes in the lab. So it's very, very expensive to uh, use this media. So again, with uh, one PhD student from the it's a bioengineering, he developed a new media that now we are working in the lab and we are sharing with other labs in the country. And uh, if you have around 20 labs working with our media, the govern, we will save two million reais, two million dollars, sorry, per year. So it's something that we think that's important to, to invest. But uh, this uh, media is also uh, available abroad, so it's good because we, of course, we'd like to, to make some profit on that. So this media is available in Europe from this company called Cell Guidance System. So we are selling it abroad, and the, here in Brazil, we are not selling, we're just uh, sharing it. One other thing that I think that was important for, for me, and I, I, I would encourage everybody that would like to start in a new field, is try to visit other places. So once I spent like two months, I went to, it was like uh, three years ago, I went to US and visited several companies and several institutes there. Just arrived there, okay, I'd like to talk to, to uh, the dean, to the director, just like to know what's going on here. So it was very important for me to try to plan what I'd like to do in Brazil, doing this kind of, uh, of trip. So uh, basically I went to uh, Boston and to California, just visiting several labs. And it was cool. It was very important just to open my mind and say, look, there's lots of uh, interesting things that I can do in Brazil. That are, Some of them have already been done in other places, but uh, in Brazil we don't have anything like that. So it was very important also. Okay, and uh, because of that, after we, we got uh, support from several uh, Brazilian funding, from the state agencies and also federal agents, from the Ministry of Health, and then we started with our uh, lab. Our lab is located in the hospital in the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. It's called LANCE, that's National Laboratory for, stem, for Embryonic Stem Cells. Basically, as I said, we do training for uh, students and researchers. We develop and uh, distribute uh, reagents, and of course, we do uh, our science. And uh, now we are trying to uh, work in collaboration with some startups in, in Brazil. So this, I, I mean, probably uh, Aurelio, Aurelio is the mind behind this uh, initiative in the, in the Rio. So it's basically the founder of the Ijaia Biotech is also one, uh, uh, one of the shares of the stem cell therapies. There are two of the companies that were uh, developed, that were created in, the, in, in Rio, and now we are trying to do some kind of partnership with them in order to try to uh, 
things that we develop in the, in the lab goes to the companies and the ideas again trying to make profit and also to improve the innovation in this area in the in Rio. Okay, so uh, after we have this, uh, we have the, the lab, after we have people that were trained, have, after we have the support, we decided to let's go back and try to do science, really do the science to publish papers and things like this. So, uh, as I said, uh, we work, we start to work with embryonic stem cells. These cells, they come, come from the uh, inner cell mass of a blastocyst or of an embryo, five uh, to seven days after they are fertilized in vitro. And when you get those cells, you have a culture that's basically li look like a immortalized culture that grows a lot. And depending on the stimulus that you give to them, they can give rise to different cell types of the body, basically to all of the uh, 200 types of the of cell types of the body. And this is why there's lots of expectation to work with those cells in the in the for treatment of several diseases. But a few uh, years ago, I would say three years ago, something happened that was very, very cool and very interesting for, for us. Instead of using embryos to produce those cells, one guy in Japan, he did something that was amazing. It's very, very simple also. He basically, he got a piece of, of a skin of a human. He was able to reprogram those cells. He basically used some virus with some genes that were originally from, uh, that they were expressed in embryos, and then he did that. He created one cell line that was basically almost identical to one cell line from embryonic stem cells. And why it's so important? Because not only because you, for, for, for some uh, experiments you don't need the embryos, but also because you can, for example, get one adult with a disease that you don't know exactly how to study, or because it's hard to study, and then you get a piece of the of skin of him, and then you transform that piece of skin, for example, in brain cells. And then you can study the brains, the brain cells from that guy without opening his head. This is basically the, the idea. And this is what we're trying to do, uh, trying to model some diseases, especially with uh, schizophrenia. So we're working with schizophrenia in the lab. We know that 1% of the population in the world has schizophrenia. It's a very, uh, it costs like for Brazil around 16 billion dollars per year to treat people with schizophrenia. In the US it's 62 billion dollars. It's a lot of, of people in Brazil, 2 million people has schizophrenia here. And uh, it's also, it's top 10 uh, disease or mental disorders. Or it's among the top 10 causes of disability in the country. So it's a huge problem. And there's not so many, uh, I mean, of course you have treatment, but it's hard. It's basically you have to test on one drug, doesn't work, let's try another one. So it's something tricky. And basically what we, we are trying to do, we are creating neurons from these patients and now we want to try to test several new drugs in the system in order to then to uh, go back to the patient and uh, do something with them. And it's very interesting. I went to uh, uh, Rio, Rio, Porto Alegre, Rio Grande do Sul, a few months ago, and we have a collaboration with a psychiatrist there. And the one paper that we published showing that we were able to revert some of the phenotypes of the schizophrenia in vitro in our model with one specific drug. Now he's testing this drug in the patient, having a good result. So it's basically one, uh, what we call the personali personalized medicine. So we are uh, very excited about this possibility. So this is the group of the lab. And uh, what our goal now is try to do what we call high throughput screening. Try to get cells from the patient, transform these cells in neurons, and then test several uh, disease, several drugs, and then try to improve uh, some of the phenotypes that we are seeing in the patient and in the, in the cells, and eventually go back to the patient. Let's see if it works.